Okay, so now the objective for this video is the following. So for the natural numbers, for the finite sets, we define the cardinality of a finite set to be the natural number, uh, the only the unique natural number that is equimorphic to it. For the infinite case, so far what we know, from the, how we measure sizes so far is by an equivalence relation. Again, it's not an equivalence relation because uh, we're talking about all sets. But we know when two things have the same size, but what do we call that size? Well, we call it the cardinality of this set, but what is the cardinality? Is there, what object is it? And uh, if uh, this equivalence relation was actually an equivalence relation, we could say, well, I'll take the quotient, all the things that have the same um, size, we make them take the quotient, and now this equivalence class of this thing represents that size, right? So that would be good, but there are, we cannot take all the things, let's say all the things that have size omega, this is not a thing, uh, it's not a set, because we cannot use any action to define the set of all the things that have size omega. So let's say the set of all the A's that are uh, equimorphic to, let's say, omega, uh, or any other set, is not a set, this is not a set, this is a class. Uh, we cannot use a subset axiom to define this because we don't know uh, where this, uh, where we're taking this. This is from everywhere. We just take them from everywhere. There are too many of these things that are epimorphic to this, and we cannot consider that set. That's just we cannot do. So we cannot take a quotient of uh, under this uh, kind of relation of being epimorphic. So instead, what we're gonna do to talk about cardinals is we're gonna pick for each size we're gonna pick a representative. So somebody, a unique element, an element we can define that is unique, that is gonna represent everything that has that size, okay? So, and those are gonna be what we call uh, the cardinal numbers. So the cardinal numbers um, are gonna be these things. So this definition might not make any sense uh, for now. I mean, you, you can you understand the words because we've seen this before. So a set K is said to be a cardinal if it satisfies its properties, uh, is transitive. Remember what transitive means, that for every X that belongs to K, X subset of K, um, right? So on, or in other words, if Y belongs to X, which belongs to K, then Y belongs to K. Uh, that's what transitive means. Um, Second property that belongs is linear in K. Linear means like it's a linear ordering. Linear ordering means that it's not a partial ordering, but it's a line, so all the elements are um, connected. So for every X and Y in K, either X belongs to Y or Y belongs to X. That's what it means to be linear. So all the elements are inside, they belong to each other right, one way or another. And the last one is every element that is in K is not equimorphic to it, um, equinumerous to it, sorry. Uh, so they are all essentially smaller, all the members are smaller. Okay, so this property, uh, for, this is a definition of um, cardinal that we're gonna see later on. So for now, let's just assume it's just some definition, so some property. Um, we are not going to use the particular properties of cardinals yet. So it's just, a cardinal is just something that satisfies its properties. And why do we care about them is because they are quite nice and they satisfy this theorem. For every set A, there is a unique object that satisfies this property. So there's a unique cardinal that is equinumerous to it. That requires a proof using, of course, this, this uh, these uh, properties, which we're gonna do later. For now, let's just stay with this. Every set A is a unique uh, object K satisfying these things that is equinumerous to it. And then we're gonna use that unique element to kind of represent the whole equivalence class of equinumerosity. So, so we call this K the cardinality of A. So that this unique k that is equal numerous to a is the cardinality of a. I will write card a equals k. Okay, so now we can have a representative. So when we talk about the cardinality of somebody, it's going to be these objects.
whatever the object is. Um, cool. So, so examples of cardinals are uh, first uh, the natural numbers is a cardinal. Actually, this one we can prove because this one we know the natural numbers are uh, transitive. We prove that on that section. We know belong is linear on the natural number because the natural number contains, as I said, all the previous natural numbers and the previous natural numbers are ordered between each other. And all the members of the natural numbers are strictly smaller, so they are not equinumerous to it. So it's easy to see that every natural number is uh, satisfying these three properties. And then what else do we know? We know that omega is a cardinal. Well, again, uh, we know it's transitive. Um, we know it's linear because its elements are the natural numbers and they all belong to each other. And all, the, all its elements are finite, and omega is not finite, so not all of its elements is uh, equinumerous to itself. Uh, and so far, those are the only two cardinals we know, but there are going to be more cardinals, many more cardinals for all the other sizes. For each size, there is a cardinal. Uh, there is a set that satisfies this property. That's a cardinal. Cool. Um, just a little bit of notation, the cardinality of omega is actually, in reality, from what we have defined, uh, the cardinality of omega is actually itself, it's omega. So, because omega is a cardinal itself. So this is just notation. So this thing, this, uh, this guy here is called Aleph not. Aleph is a uh, Hebrew letter um, that was used, I guess, by Cantor when he defined uh, cardinals. Um, so the not becomes, becomes the zero is because it's the first infinite cardinal. Uh, so essentially, uh, the difference between omega and aleph not they are the same thing. Omega and aleph not are the same object, but aleph not when we're talking about cardinals, we think of aleph not. When we're talking about um, natural numbers or ordinals, we're going to be thinking of omega. It's just on the depending on the usage which one we use, but they are the same object. Um, we're going to denote the cardinality of the reals 2 to the aleph not, and we're going to see that in the next slide, um, where this comes from. And um, aleph 1 is going to be the next cardinal after aleph 0, which so far we don't know why there is a next one, but we're going to see that later. So there is a next cardinal, and a next size up after aleph 0. It might be this one or not, um, that we can approve. But uh, let's go Aleph 1. Good. Uh, so next video, we're going to see how to add multiply cardinals.